not every autonomous vehicle has to be a self-driving car. Here in London, just outside the O2, we're taking a look at the Meridian Shuttle, an electric vehicle that's been designed as a new form of public transportation. It's not the sleekest or fastest machine in the world, but it's still packing some pretty interesting tech under the hood. Uh, so this Meridian now is being built by a French company called Navia. Um, it's, uh, the service is really uh, less my mobility. It means that during peak hours, it can follow a scheduled programmed route and rest of the time it can be called by uh, an application on smartphone by whoever needs uh, transportation. We wanted something different, not looking like a car, not looking like a bus. Um, also, the, the fact that it's open, I think it's the uh, best way for passengers to be used to it because they, they are not removed from their environment. Uh, uh, but we will also test a closed version um, and that's one subject of study, how people would like to be driverless inside a small box. It has uh, lidars on each corner. It can see uh, up to 200 meters, 360 degrees around it. And the way it works, even for localization, it's making a map 25 times per second. And it's matching the map with what it has. And from there, it looks at the obstacle and speed of obstacle, and you will behave depending on what kind of obstacle. Different if it's a pedestrian or a car. So let's talk about some of those objects then. If it's a pedestrian or a car, how close will it need to be before the Meridian says, OK, I need to stop here or slow down or, or do something that I wouldn't otherwise normally be doing? It really depends. If it's a car, it will f follow the speed of the car. Uh, and also it can predict the trajectory of car. If it's a pedestrian, it will just slow down and stop because you don't know where a pedestrian will go. <laughs> so it's different behavior depending on the, of the obstacle it sees. We've seen it moving around today. What have been people's reactions? Uh, have they surprised you at all? You know, that sort of initial feedback. Very different, but uh, um, usually they, they like it and it feels quite normal. When, once you are inside, you just forget that it's driverless. Um, we even interviewed people who didn't know it was very well after the ride. So. <laughs> the thing I've noticed in the demonstration today is uh, some people are amused by it, some people who are looking at their phones really don't even notice it at all and the vehicle will come to a stop, let them pass, it continues its journey and they haven't even noticed at all. So um, I think it's also apparent that people like to see it and like uh, what it potentially can offer. So really in interested to see how that will pan out in the trials. Yeah, I must say, like, I've been surprised at how comfortable people are with it. And if there wasn't, you know, particular signage for it, I'm not sure they would notice at all that it is actually driverless. You know, we have seen some automated transport in the past, and this seems to have integrated in pretty seamlessly even today. There's been a lot of talk about driverless cars and automated technology in the, in the press and the media and I think people are excited. I think they want to see these things actually come to fruition and hopefully through the trials we can achieve that. So we're really looking at public acceptability around driverless cars 